Hello darlings and welcome to Gourmet Cooking with Chemise Dubois. I'm your host, Chemise Dubois. Today we're making a lovely concoction that was passed down from my grandmother to my mother to me. Today we're making Pillsbury Cheesecake Swirl. Now this lovely little dish is sure to be a hit at every one of your parties. Great for birthdays, bar mitzvahs, you name it, you can serve it there. Now, you want to make sure before you start that you have all your ingredients. So get your box of cake mix. You can get this at any grocery store. I got this at the grocery outlet. It was $1.99. Mm, it's delicious and affordable. Now, you want to make sure you have vegetable oil. I'm out, so we're using olive oil today. I'm sure it'll taste fine. Won't make a big difference. Now, you need an egg for this recipe as well. I like the large Grade A all natural brown eggs. I like them large and brown. It's my favorite. You'll also need yourself a little measuring cup. I love this one because it's clear. It's my favorite color. Now we have a large mixing bowl, clear, just so you can see what's going on in there. You don't want any surprises, trust me. And we have a large cake pan. So you're going to want to butter this up real nice. I'm out of butter, but we'll make do. Let's rub it somewhere. Now, you're going to put your cake mix in the large cake pan when we're done here. So make sure you keep this close at hand. I lost it last time. Don't want to do that again. So, I guess we'll just start by opening up this cheesecake foil box. I don't know what that is, so we'll just ignore that for now. So you just tear open your cake mix. Now this shit is good stuff, so you don't want to spill any of it. So we'll open it over the bowl. You can smell the freshness. It's flavor lot to keep the freshness in. So you just empty in your cake mix into your large bowl. Now you want to get all of it in there because this shit's good. You don't want to miss out on any of it. You want all the flavor to come out of the bag. Oh, that's good shit. Now, you need a third cup oil. So, let's we'll move our eggs out of the way here. And we'll put our oil in here. Now, you want to make sure you measure this carefully, because if you fuck it up, it's not going to taste good. So, measure carefully. See? Mmm. Oh, that's not quite enough. We'll add a little more in there. There we go. You don't want to get this oil everywhere, it stains everything. So you dump your oils in there. Now remember, careful measuring is the key to a tasty dish. So measure everything top notch careful. Now you need one egg. So we'll just throw a little egg in here. Tasty. And you need two tablespoons of oil. So measure oil, water. You need two tablespoons of water. So measure your water careful. And we need a whisk, so we're going to whisk this up right nice. Now, you get yourself a good mixer. This is the KitchenAid. I love KitchenAid. It's really good. So, mix it up right nice. Mixing is important. Now, you want to have long, smooth strokes. Long, smooth strokes are very important. You want to be even, you want to be rhythmic, because you want it all to mix together bright, nice, and tasty. So, you just put your back into it and do it. Yes. Mix it together. Look at that smooth, creamy texture. Now, that is good eating. Now, once you've got it all mixed up and it looks real smooth and creamy, you're going to get your cake pan. And you're just going to pour it nice and smooth all up in the cake pan. Now, be careful. You don't want to get this on your dress. It never comes out. Look at how smooth and creamy it gets up in the bowl. You just want to layer that all throughout the cake pan. Now, distribution is important. Like my good friend Vinny always says, distribute correctly, it'll turn out fine. Now, once you've got it smoothly layered through your pan so that the heat distributes evenly, we're going to put it in 
the oven to bake. So we make sure we preheat, which I didn't do today. Preheat your oven. And we're going to put the cake batter into the oven to cook. So, oh, it'll be heavenly. So, while that's cooking, we'll go over some cleanup tips for when people's coming over. So if you're cooking this cheesecake swirl for a birthday party or your bar mitzvah, you're going to want to clean this stuff up before your family gets here. You don't want them thinking you're a big fat lazy slob. So the first thing you're going to need to clean up this kitchen is paper towels. So this happens to actually be the only cleaning material I have. Um, I don't really believe in housekeeping. I don't really have time. So normally I just wipe this shit up with the paper towel. Now, you want to make sure you get in there nice and good because this chocolate shit, this takes a lot of scrubbing. Ever since the water got cut off about three minutes ago, I forgot to pay the water bill. So pretty much all I've got to do here is, um, oh, this shit's a mess. Look at this. So you just got to scrub and scrub until the chocolate comes up. Oh, that's good shit. I just love this chocolate. Now, um, so if you just scrub until it comes up, and then soon we can see the finished product. Usually by the other time you're done scrubbing the counters up, your cheesecake swirl is done cooking. So now let's see the finished product. Mmm, smells delicious. Oh, now your family's gonna love these treats. They're really tasty. And as I said earlier, if you find it at the right place, really affordable. So, once you finish cooking it up, you can just soap it up in a lovely, you can just soap it right out of the pan. And there's nothing like home cooking. Mm. Everyone's going to love these. Thanks for joining me this week. My name is Shamise Dubois. And this has been Gourmet Cooking with Chemise Dubois. Till next time. Cupcake, anybody? Um, no, thank you. Will you ruminate these? Will you eat them? The hell no. <laughs> <clears throat> the dog won't even eat those. <laughs> Oh, by the way, it's already rolling. Is it? <laughs> 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 it smells great.